Welcome back. Moving forward in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to log on to the OpenShift platform. Since we've, in the previous lesson, I've demonstrated how to go about actually creating an account so that you can navigate eventually to the web console and start creating projects. So here we are. And by the way, it takes a little while because there's so much demand of Red Hat OpenShift that it takes about four to five days before they actually give you the free trial, okay? So just be aware that there's a backlog of people trying to learn Red Hat OpenShift uh, because it's really a neat product. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna demonstrate how to log in by clicking on the, or first you need to navigate to openshift.com, straightforward, click on login. And this will navigate to the Red Hat account page where you need to enter your username and password which will allow you to navigate eventually to the web console so I'm going to demonstrate this quickly in this short lesson so once you're on the OpenShift online let's click on login with Red Hat I'm going to go ahead and enter my login and then password once I enter my password I'm going to click login and this will bring me to the active subscriptions where I can now open up the web console Notice the expiration date for the sandbox is also provided. And you have two gigabytes of memory and then two gigs of hard drive space. And then of course the community plan is free. So this comes with the plan that you've selected or the subscription that you've selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on open web console. This will open up a new tab and will take us to the dashboard. Congratulations, so you've successfully logged on to the OpenShift online, where you can see all the projects that you currently have. Since you don't have any projects, since this is just the first time you're logging in, there will be no project, you can create a project. Now this dashboard is a little different than the previous dashboard. Since I'm placing this lecture as an update, you will notice a little bit different navigation, but of course the tools are the same. So from the left, navigation and you can see the catalog, the workloads, networking, storage, bills, the administration and so forth. So let's go ahead and click a new project or create a new project rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on create project. Just give it a name. I'm gonna say new PHP. I'm gonna say PHP project. You can also provide a description that's optional. And let's click on create. Great, so it's gonna spin up the project. It's gonna bring up the resource dashboard and get started with your project. So here I can add the contents. I can either deploy an image or import a YAML file. So if you already have a YAML file, you can simply import that and then move forward with that. So I'm gonna click on browse catalog because at this point, I will demonstrate this later, how to deploy an image and import YAML to create your project. So for right now, I'm gonna click on browse catalog and this will navigate me to the developer catalog where I can now choose what kind of project I'd like to deploy. So if it's a .NET 4, Apache, HTTP server, Nginx, PHP, Perl, Python, and so forth. You can scroll down and take a look at different catalog items that you can choose. So I'm interested in building a PHP project. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on PHP. And this will build PHP 7.2 application, which is the fairly current. And then all I need to do is click on create application. Now before I click on create application, there's a sample repository. So it's gonna pull this code from this particular repository, which is of course a cake PHP application, okay? So if you have your own repository, you could do so. And of course you can change it later on and create additional projects which you are going to practice quite a bit. So if you need to see this repository, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this just so that you can see quickly where the code is gonna come from. So this is the cake PHP application. And again, this is, gives you just a sample app on OpenShift that you can navigate and take a look at and install or create, okay? All right, so let's navigate back to our dashboard here. So once I've selected the PHP application, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create application. And this is going to give it a new namespace, a version number, and I can name the resources created for this application. And I can, of course, like I mentioned earlier, use my own Git repository, my own code, or 
I can try a sample as well. So for instance, let me navigate to GitHub and see if I have, since I'm already logged on to GitHub, I'm going to navigate and take a look at the repositories that I have. So let's see if I can find the OpenShift. These are different repositories that I use and I've also several repositories for my courses. And I believe, how about this, my PHP app, Let's see if I pull this. So I can clone or download and here's the URL. I'm going to copy it, navigate back here, and then of course paste it. So now it's going to pull this repository and all the PHP application from this particular GitHub repository, which is my own. And I can give a name, I can say PHP. I have the option to create a route which exposes the application at a public URL, which is fine. Let's go ahead and check this box. And this will simply give me a URL, right? An external URL so that my application can be seen. And let's go ahead and create. Now I've just picked up a random project here from my Git repository. And let's see if it spins it up and creates the pod for us. So here it is, a zero or one pod. If I click on the arrow here, it gives me the details of this particular pod. So there's one pod. Here's the new PHP. It's a rolling strategy that I'm using, pod selector, and all of the different options that it provides for details with this particular application. So if I click on this application, it gives me the overview. I can take a look at the YAML file. Here's the YAML file that actually was created for this particular application. Now, if you already have your own YAML file, perfect. You can simply deploy the entire application using your own YAML, which I'm gonna demonstrate later in the course how to create this YAML file and how to deploy your own application. Similarly, you can take a look at the pods tab here. At this point, it's still probably spinning the pod. Take a look at the environment. So here's the environment, and then of course the events. So the events team is going to give you the actual list of what's happening. So less than a minute ago, created a replication controller PHP button for version one. So let's navigate to projects from the left navigation pane. And here's your project, which is active. Perfect. So once my project is active, let's navigate and click on the project. I like to demonstrate a few other things that are very helpful. So let's click on new PHP project that we just spun up. And here's a nice dashboard. So they've also, OpenShift has also enhanced their dashboard. So here you can see the health, the compute resources, and kind of shows you a nice visual dashboard as well. And then of course the time bound resource usage is helpful. So this is really nice that they have come up with this dashboard. If I click on resources tab, it's gonna take me to the resources area where we can navigate and take a look at all of the resources. All right, perfect. Let's scroll down from the left navigation pane. Let's go to networking because since we have an application already spun up and it just took us a few minutes, I'm gonna open up the networking and click on routes because if you recall, once we were creating this application, we checked the box called route. So here it is, here's the location. So it gives us the URL where now I can take a look at my PHP application. So let's go ahead and click on it. Congratulations, this is awesome. So now you have successfully launched your own PHP application based on your own code. And this is of course a sample HTML page, right? Right off of my GitHub. So if I navigate to GitHub, notice this is the actual my PHP app that already has the index.php file and other files as well. So this, how easy it is to spin up and deploy a PHP application using Red Hat OpenShift. So here's the URL. Awesome. So I hope this helps kind of walk through the entire process, so to speak, at a high level overview. Moving forward in subsequent lectures, I'm gonna break everything down into easier steps so that you can not only understand each of the options, but also understand why do we use it and how easy and powerful it is to use Red Hat OpenShift on. So I hope this helped practice with this. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area with this. Let's move to the next lesson.